Now we'll go through an actual explicit example of using functions that are not necessarily linear to um, find the least squares approximation solution to some set of data. So in order to do this, we're going to first write down um, a general form, a little bit more general than the one that we worked through before. where we try to fit our data to very similar to before. Previously, we had output data y here, and we had input functions that only depended on x. We can also write functions that depend on both x and y, and our output data is also some mixture of x's and y's. But we make the same assumptions about their dependence um, and independence. So here, I'm using the same exact function. Um, and there are d many equations because we have d data points. And in this case, we have k functions f and one function g here. But the same assumptions hold, namely that we are assuming that these constants, the aj's, are independent of each other. And the functions, the f's and the g's, are linearly independent of each other. So in this case, we can write down the same exact setup as we had before. We would just have this as our vector b. The um, functions with their data points make a, a matrix, um, in this case, a d by k matrix. And then that acts on the vector of a's, a1 through a k, a1 through a um, k, because we have k unknowns. Now, the example that we'll look at and work through is called the Michaelis Menten equation. And this equation is of the form v equals v max s, which is the concentration of a substrate, divided by km plus s. So this here is a function of s. And what the symbols mean in this equation are is that V is the reaction rate, S is the concentration, of a substrate, V max. Vmax and Km here are um, co unknown constants, and we'll actually use data to figure, figure these out by using the least squares approximation. So this is the maximum rate achieved by the system. And Km is the substrate concentration when the reaction rate is half of Vmax. And this is a model that describes the rate of reaction of a particular enzymatic reaction. And often, um, if you're a biochemist, then you typically know the concentration that you have, and you also have the reaction rate from your given experiment, and it's typically your job to figure out what Vmax and Km are. So let me just write that out here. So we have data is typically in the form Vi, where i goes from 1 through d, and Si. So in this case, um, you can think of s as your x and v as your y. And if we, um, this isn't a, a linear combination of functions with the unknown coefficients in front of them. So what you can do is you can multiply out the denominator on both sides. And then you can isolate, um, for instance, by solving for one of these functions in terms of the others where our coefficients are, are unknowns, um, move those to one side. So this looks like SV equals Vmax S minus Km 
v. And this is exactly in this form, where g here, we can identify g from this expression, g of s v equals just s times v, and a1 is v max, a2 is km, and f1 is just s, and f2 is negative v. Sorry, that's positive. This is negative v. And so from this, we can construct a matrix A, construct a vector B, um, and so on, once we're given specific data where I goes from 1 to D. And so that setup looks roughly something like this. We can construct our matrix A to B. The first column consists of all of the substrate concentrations that we're working with. So S1 all the way down to SD. And negative V, negative the reaction rate that we find for each of those substrate concentrations. So negative V1 all the way down to negative V D. And our vector B, in this case, is actually the product of SI with VI. And so we can compute the transpose of this, multiply the two matrices, work all that out, and we would find, after we do all of that, that we get Vmax Km equals a transpose A inverse, so I'll just write down what A transpose A is. You can compute it explicitly. It's very similar to the calculation when we computed um, the linear regression in the general case. And then we have to take the inverse of this. So this is A transpose A. Inverse applied to A transpose acting on this vector B. And A transpose acting on this vector B is just, and this time I'll use a different index for the summation symbol so we don't conflate it with this index. We get SJ squared with V, J, for the first component. And for the second component, we have the negative sign and square on the V. Oops, square on the V, not the S. So that's just to the first power here. And this gives us our coefficients Vmax and Km. So let's actually see how this works in an explicit example where um, my friend was kind enough to donate some of these um, data values for a given experiment that they had. So I'll pull that up um, on the side. This will all be erased. And we'll look at what Mathematica has to say when we analyze that data and we plot the results. All right, so here we have an example of our matrix A. And on the left-hand side, we have the substrate concentration. And on the right-hand side is negative of the reaction rates that were found in that experiment. And the vector B is the product of those two uh, well, provided that we didn't use the negative sign here, it's just the product of the substrate concentration with the reaction rate. And um, I'm just encoding and putting all of this information into Mathematica, writing down that um, A transpose A vector, which I'm just going to call C. And this will allow me to just immediately see what um, Km and what Vmax are. In this case, the order is Vmax comes first and then it's Km. So I just write this in matrix form, compute the inverse of A transpose times A times this vector C, which is just A transpose times B. And we know that that would give us 
the constants that we're looking for. And supposedly they're 0 0.287 you know, and 0 0.317 and so on. And what we want to do now is we're going to take these data points and we want to plot them. So I'm just going to take the original matrix A, and I notice that if I just multiply by negative 1, I wouldn't have to erase all of the minus signs by hand. Um, if I multiply on the right by this matrix, I would get the resulting um, matrix back whose left column are all of the horizontal axis components, and the right column gives me all of the vertical axis components. So if I write all that down, I get this list of data points right here. And then after that, we're going to plot both of our data points. So I've written that plot as data, and that's going to be a list plot in Mathematica. And I'm also going to define aprox, which is just our approximation by using the approximated constant values that we found before. So this is just a plot of the michaelis menten equation, where here x is the substrate concentration, and our values are going from 0 to 1 because the values are bounded between 0 and 1 on the left-hand side here. And the last line shows that we're just going to plot both of those functions on the same graph at the same time. So I'm about to show you what that looks like so you can see if this is a good approximation or not. So here's what that plot looks like with all of these data points. And you can see that it's actually a very good approximation to the um, data points that we have. So this is um, a nice example of how you can actually use this least squares method, which is quite general, actually, in terms of the way that we've written our functions and the constants that show up as coefficients of those different kinds of functions. And we could use linear algebra, essentially, to figure out uh, curves that best mi match our data points. And you can imagine that you can do this for a wide variety of functions. And I leave it to you to think of the amazing possible applications you can use this for.